Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Thank you, Can Choir. That was another great rendition. And I pray the Lord Jesus to sing about will be all in all in your life in Jesus' name. Provider, helper, lifter up of our heads, and everything, all the promises of the word through the Lord Jesus will be upon every one of us in Jesus' name. All our ministers, professionals, workers, online, everywhere, wherever you are, Africa, Asia, America, Europe, Australia, the Pacific, good morning to every one of you. And then to the Alpha location here at Abeokota now. Your own good morning. Good morning, everyone. God will bless you beyond your expectation. Father, we well, thank you at this time. We we'll bless your name. We know you are a mighty God and a great God. And we know that Jesus Christ, he will help everyone. He will provide for everyone. He will do all that the Father has ordained. He will do in every life in Jesus' name. Open our eyes of understanding once again this morning and help us, Lord, to go into your word, getting benefit from the word you revealed to us today. Bless all our ministers, bless everyone, and we pray we'll make progress in the calling you have given us in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. You are going to give a good amen before you sit down. God bless every one of you. We're coming to Hebrews now again. Already we've done Hebrews chapter 1. And we've seen that the Son of God is the upholder of the whole universe. We've gone through to chapter 2. And we've seen that Jesus Christ is the one. He has all authority. And it is he that brings us children of God unto glory. We've seen chapter 3 and we've seen that we consider Jesus the high priest of our confession and the high priest of our profession. We've seen in him chapter 4 and in chapter 4 he comes to give us rest and because he gives us rest we can come to the throne of grace and receive help and find help in the time of need. We've seen him in chapter 5 and in the one that is so great I praise the calling was not by himself the father called him and because the father called him he fulfilled his ministry faithfully and now he brings us to God in a deeper relationship and a deeper sense and then in chapter 6 we've seen that now we can go to perfection through him and we can have the foundation laid and the principle laid and now we come to chapter 7 today this morning we're looking at chapter 7 chapter 8 chapter 9 and chapter 10 and i pray that the spirit of god himself will reveal himself unto us and reveal jesus unto us actually that's what jesus said he said it is expedient for you that i go away because if i don't go away that uh, with that uh, spirit will not come but when he is come he will guide you into all truth it will speak of me because he will discover that which is mine and so we are praying this morning that the holy spirit himself will reveal christ to us christ as savior christ as sanctifier christ as a baptizer in the holy ghost christ as our shepherd christ as our high priest christ at the final and the great prophet christ at the final revelation the final word of god christ the all in all and christ who is coming again and i pray the revelation 
of the word in your life this morning will not be in vain in jesus name whatever you are still to receive of the lord you are saved we well, thank god you are sanctified we well, thank god the power of the holy ghost that it brings in our lives whatever we are still to have Christ is there this morning. The Savior is there this morning. Our substitute is there this morning. The sanctifier is there this morning. And the great shepherd and bishop of our soul is here this morning. It will fill your heart to overflowing in Jesus' name. When he shepherds us, he takes care of us. And then we can sing with the psalmist. The Lord is my shepherd, and he provides everything for us. And as the Lord is your shepherd, he will guide you into the provision that he has, and he makes you to rest in green pastures, and then he will bring his righteousness into your life, his spirit into your life, his perfection into your life. And even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord himself will take care of you, and nothing evil will come your way. Nothing evil will come my way. And then you can sing with the psalmist, Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in his house. That's in eternity now, forever and ever. Somebody says, Amen. Amen. Today we're coming to Jesus again. I want to know more about him. Learn more about him. Get into the river of blessing through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm talking to you today on Jesus and his more excellent ministry of dominion. Remember once again, dominion. Dominion over sin. Dominion over self. Dominion over Satan. Dominion over anything and everything in society that will come your way and double cross you and will not allow you to go where you ought to go. That dominion in a greater sense, in a higher sense, in a deeper sense, that dominion will be effected in your life today in Jesus' name. And it's Jesus, it's through that Jesus we have that channel, it's through Jesus we have that power, it's through Jesus we have the abundance of the provision of the Lord, and then he has an excellent ministry. Excellent ministry, actually it says a more excellent ministry. And as we come to Christ, you'll discover that he has a more excellent ministry of all the provision of heaven into every life and it is in your life today in Jesus name Jesus and his more excellent ministry of dominion look at Hebrews chapter 7 and I'm reading from verse 25 it says wherefore he is able that's Christ wherefore he is able whatever it begins in your life is able to perfect is able to make progress and is able to finalize in performance wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him that's the only way to come to god we come to god by him and then it says seeing he ever live to make intercession for them look at verse 26 in verse 26 for such an high priest jesus for such an high priest a savior for such an high priest a shepherd for such an high priest a sanctifier for such an high priest became us who is holy that's christ harmless that's christ undefiled that's christ separate from sinners that's christ and made higher than the heavens let's look at chapter 8 we're looking at verse 6 chapter 8 verse 6 it says but now now at this time now at your own time now at the period of the church now in the dispensation of the church now after the cross after the sacrifice that he had effected it says now as he obtained a more excellent ministry 
now Christ Jesus has obtained a more excellent ministry. That word more is a more of is a word of comparison. More than the ministry of Abraham, more than the ministry of Moses, more than the ministry of David, more than the ministry of Aaron, more than the ministry of angels, he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant it again that word better is the word of comparison there's the old covenant and the old covenant had its limitation but now we come to the new covenant the covenant that is based on the sacrifice of Christ. And it says it's a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Do you see that verse? More excellent ministry. Do you see in that verse mediator of a better covenant? Do you see that? And it's established upon better promises we're looking at chapter 9 chapter 9 i'm looking at verse 14 hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 how much more see that again it's talking about christ it's talking about his sacrifice and it's talking about the effect and the product and the result of his sacrifice in your life in my life in our lives and in the whole church as we come to him and we touch him again and we connect with him again and he says how much more shall the blood of christ as who through the eternal spirit offered himself offered himself it's not the offering of a goat or of a chicken of an animal it's not the offering of the old covenant anymore he christ the savior he offered himself without spot to god that's why it's acceptable unto god because that sacrifice because that offering is without spot and without blemish and without any sin the spotless lamb of god the sinless lamb of god offered himself and he says is to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god and now you can welcome to chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 19 and it says having therefore brethren boldness courage having them fearlessness because the grace of god had broken down the middle wall of partition between the holy god and the sinful man and he has taken that nature of sin away he has taken that practice and the presence of sin he has taken that away and now because he's washed us and cleansed us and purged us and purified us we can come with boldness without any fear or humility and without any sense of guilt or condemnation having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus then he says in verse 20 in verse 20 it says by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say through his flesh and so you see everything is talking about Christ because whatever you have in the kingdom from the little, from the least to the greatest, whatever you have in the kingdom, you have it through Jesus Christ. And that's why we're looking at these chapters today. Jesus and his more excellent ministry of dominion. Three uh, points we're looking at. We look at number one, the incomparable cornerstone of our salvation think about christ the cornerstone incomparable to any other personality any other priest any other prophet any other person both in the old testament and the new testament even on earth and in heaven the incomparable cornerstone of our salvation number two is the incorruptible covenant for our sanctification incorruptible covenant for our sufficiency incomparable covenant for our supremacy lifting us up than he ever did for the old testament people number three the incontestable confidence in his shortship 
he is the surety of the new covenant the surety of the better covenant a covenant and we have incontestable confidence in his surety we're coming to number one number one we're looking at the incomparable cornerstone of our salvation three things here as we talk about him as we think about him as we learn about him as we meditate about him three things number one the perpetuity of a surpassing priesthood his priesthood surpasses any other priesthood anywhere revealed in the old dispensation in the new dispensation the perpetuity of a surpassing priesthood number two the perfection through his spotless priesthood the priesthood that had no fault that had no spot that had no fault or anything that would disqualify him in ministry to God and ministry to us and as the priest joining us and the almighty God the perfection through his spotless sinless priesthood we're coming to number three the power of a sanctifying priesthood the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ he saves not only that he supplies all our needs not only that he sanctifies us he purifies us he makes us holy through and through on the inside in our heart and then it shows out in our life look at number one there number one the perpetuity of a surpassing priesthood we're coming to hebrews chapter 7 and we're looking at verse 1 it says for this melchizedek king of salem when you hear salem shalom in hebrew that's peace and the priest of the most high god who met abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him look at verse 2 it says in verse 2 to whom also abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation the king of righteousness and then after that also the king of salem which is the king of peace he is the king of peace he is the king of righteousness man the sinful man does not have peace there's no peace for the wicked says the lord no peace for the sinner says the lord no peace for the compromiser says the lord no peace for those who have forsaken and forgotten god says the lord but then we want to have peace with god and peace in our heart and peace in everything that we do and peace in our family it comes through christ he is the king all peace and then righteousness the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god but it is through his righteousness it is through his sacrifice that we have righteousness he is the king of righteousness he king is the one of, of authority a king is the one that has all power a king is the one that has royalty a king is the one you submit to and you give yourself to and when you submit to yourself to the lord jesus christ you have him you accept him you believe him as savior you believe him as lord the lord of your life he'll be the king of peace in your life he'll be the king of righteousness in your life look at verse 3 there it says in verse 3 without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abideth a priest continually forever look at uh, verse 24 there in verse 24 he tells us hebrews chapter 7 verse 24 but this man christ but this man jesus but this man our substitute but this man our savior because he continues ever he continues ever he died 
he rose again on the third day and then after showing himself with many infallible proofs unto his disciples he went to heaven and he sat at the right hand of majesty on high and he's still there he continues ever he was saving before he left and now he's still saving because he continues ever he sanctified he prayed for his own disciples sanctified them through the truth that word is truth he continues ever he says sanctify through he give them power behold i give unto you power over all the power of the enemy and you'll tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by enemies such you he gave power at that time he continues ever and he still gives power unto his people because he has an unchangeable priesthood and I pray that in your life you'll find him and he'll give you all the power you need and you will sustain that power and you will succeed you will not succumb to the enemy you'll not be subjected to the enemy because the one who saves is the one who sustains and he, he continues ever and look at him now in chapter 5 and verse 6 chapter 5 verse 6 it says as he saith also in another place thou art a, a priest forever thou art a priest forever you know there are when, when some people probably all the people of the world when they get to a particular age they retire they give over what they have been doing to another personality the same thing with the old testament priest the priest will come to a stage a, a situation then another priest will come the same thing with the kings of the old testament they come to the edge of their royalty of their kingship of their kingdom and then they hand over to others but christ continues ever the position of the savior it continues ever the position of the sanctifier it continues ever the position of the sustainer it continues ever and he does it today as good that as he did it in previous days he says thou art a priest forever he has not handed over his priesthood unto the founder of that church he has not handed over his priesthood unto the apostle of that church the apostle cannot save the prophet cannot save the minister cannot save all we can do is to introduce you to jesus because it's jesus that continues ever after the order of Melchizedek. Look at chapter 6, verse 20. In chapter 6, verse 20, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, even Jesus, even Jesus, made an high priest forever. Made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Let's look at number 2 there. Number 2 there is the perfection through his spotless priesthood sinless priesthood let's come to hebrews chapter 7 reading from verse 11 it tells us we're talking about jesus and about the perfection that comes through him any maker in this world any manufacturer in this world any producer in this world if they'll tell you the truth whatever they produce whatever they manufacture is not perfect anyone in this world whatever they teach the students are not perfect but when it comes to christ when it comes to the lord jesus christ perfect is life perfect is sacrifice perfect is ministry perfect everything that he did perfect and then he gives you that he never gives a substandard salvation to anyone 
He never gives a substandard blessing to everyone. He's perfect in every way. And therefore, whatever he gives and whatever he makes and whatever he brings in your life, that perfection will also show. Look at that verse 11. It says, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under each the people received the law, what for the need was there that another priest shall rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, it says, For the law, the law of Moses, for the law, the old dispensation for the law, the former covenant for the law, the old covenant made nothing perfect the high priest himself Aaron was not perfect and his uh, priests the Levites were not perfect and imperfect priesthood could not make the people perfect for the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in of a better hope did what the old covenant could not do, that's why, as a child of God, you'll not, you'll not compare yourself to those Old Testament people because this one fell, that gives you excuse to fall. No, we have a better priesthood, and because that one collapsed, under pressure so we can collapse under pressure no you can't do that it's a better priesthood it's a better ministry and it's a better covenant it says the bringing in of a better hope deed by the which were drawn near unto god look at uh, verse 22 there in verse 22 by so much was jesus made a shorty of a better testament and then we're looking at chapter 10 verse 1 chapter 10 reading from verse 1 it says for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, year after year, continually make the commerce thereunto perfect. That the old covenant could not make them perfect in their heart, in their mind, in their spirit, in their action, in their practices, in walking after the Lord, and in following after the Lord. All those people, yes, by faith, by faith, by faith, they did this and that, but you'll find something a spot you find something an imperfection in their lives but now he tells us look at verse 14 there in verse 14 he says for by one offering he christ has perfected forever them that are sanctified let's come to number three there number three we're looking at the power of his sanctifying priesthood. We come to Hebrews chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 25. It says, Wherefore he is able. Anytime you have a challenge in your life, as if the problem coming upon your life is greater than you can bear, remember that even though you are not able by yourself, without me you can do nothing, but in him and with him, he is able. Able in every sense, able in every way, able to save, able to heal, able to deliver, able to keep able to protect able to preserve able to keep you standing no matter how long you have to stand and stand against evil and stand against sin is able to make you upright that's the christ will serve and so don't uh, you know give in to the old uh, weakness of the people of the old testament you know now that you come look at that particular challenge facing you now in your christian life in your christian profession in your christian ministry in your profession anything anywhere understand we have a god who is able wherefore he is able 
not that he was able to calm the storm but now you know as we're getting older and older as um, things we were able to do in the earlier years able to run able to stand able to face anything able to focus able to learn able to study and we can study whatever they write anywhere in any book in any library when we were young the brain was young able but now as people become older and feeble what they were able to do before they cannot even see as clearly as they used to see they can even think as they used to think they cannot manifest what they used to manifest because they are getting older jesus christ does not get old like that from eternity to eternity what he did in the past is able to do today he helped people in the past is able to help people today he healed in the past is able to heal today and he sanctified he purified he made holy in the past he's still able to do that today that's why he says he is able not that he was able. Some people say when the millennial comes and when the future comes, when the perfect situation, perfect dispensation comes in the future, he'll be able because at that time he will subdue all those venomous beasts. He will subdue everything in the future. They transfer the ability of Christ in their lives to the future no not was not will be he is able also to save them to the uttermost to heal them to the uttermost to deliver them to the uttermost to sustain them to the uttermost he is able you'll be able in your life whatever commandment he has given and whatever standard he has raised up in your life helping you supporting you sustaining you maintaining the grace of god in your life he is able in my life he is able over that hurdle talk talk over this hurdle is able to put me across over this sickness is able to heal me over this peculiar challenge of my life he is able he'll be able in your life he's able to save them to the uttermost that come to god by him seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them look at verse 26 in verse 26 it says for such an high priest became us we don't need anyone less than christ less than jesus less than the savior to be our high priest such an high priest befitted us who is who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens i pray in your life you'll find him is your sustainer he'll uphold you go back home and then look at all the things that defeated you before that made you subjected succumbed and you collapsed and you couldn't go on from this moment as you get back home, as you get back to your ministry, as you get back to your office, all those things that made you fall and your face was on the ground no more. Yeah. Victory has come. Yeah. Triumph has come. Yeah. Dominion has come through his sanctifying priesthood. We're coming to point number two here. Point number two, we're looking at the incorruptible covenant for our sanctification. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1, now, of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum, this is the summary, and this is the recap. 
we summarize everything we recap and we say here is the summary of everything we have learned it says we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens and then we're looking at verse 6 verse 6 tells us but now at this time you know I, I need to emphasize it over and over and over that as we look at our lives many times if there is any deficiency if there is any inconsistency if there's any manifestation of weakness and if there is any carelessness that allows sin we're quick to go back to the old testament and we say after all look at samson he was a man of great power and look at what happened to him that's not your example he says now at this time in this dispensation you cannot excuse the flesh it's my flesh is my mind, is the society, is the environment, is everything that surrounds me that makes me to tremble and I cannot fulfill what he has called me to fulfill. He says, Now I see you obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator, he is the mediator, he is in the present tense, in the present day, in your present experience. He is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Look at uh, chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 11. Chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ being calm and high priest of good things to come, of good things to come, of good things to come, you'll do good in your life. I said he'll go, do good in your life. He didn't say Christ being a high priest of bad things to come. No, we should not be expecting evil things, bad things. Well, I'm up today. I don't know. I may be down tomorrow. That devil is terrible. That devil is wicked. He may be at the corner there and is waiting for me. Satan is not waiting for me. There are too many people in the world. He has billions of them in the world. He can go to them. How can he go to somebody who will bring him on the feet? How will he go to somebody who will knock him with the knock of Calvary? How will he come to somebody who knows his right and he knows the power the Lord has given his children? He is not waiting for me in any corner. Talk, talk for yourself. It will not double cross your path. It will not destroy your faith. It will not destroy the good thing the Lord has given you. When you wake up in the morning, you understand Christ is for me and He is able. When you wake up in the morning and you read the Bible, you say, All oh, those promises are there for me because Christ is my Savior and because Christ has a better ministry for me. It says, But Christ, being calm and I priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say of this building that God that has sent Christ to save you will also make him to sustain you in your life in Jesus name the incorruptible covenant for our sanctification we're looking at three things here number one our privilege in the better covenant our privilege in the better covenant i'd like to say my privilege in the better covenant my privilege in the better covenant can you say that with me when somebody gets married she gets married to the richest person in town in the state in the country but she didn't know her privilege in the home of the richest man in the nation she will not get much 
when you are married to Christ, when you are connected to Christ, when you come under the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must know your privilege in this better covenant. Our privilege in the better covenant. Number two, the purging of the believer's conscience. Number three, our preparation for the best commendation. The Lord on the final day will commend you. I said will commend you. Those who walk through life and they say, am I going to get to heaven? Oh, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. Why don't you believe him? Rather than believing your feeling, believing your emotion, believing the things around you. Why don't you believe him? He's going to prepare a place for me. And when he comes, he's coming for me. When Christ comes, I said he's coming for me. Who is he coming for? For me. I said for me. We must have understanding in the privilege we have in the better covenant. And then we're going to have the best commendation. Look at number one. Number one, our privilege in the better covenant. We're looking at Hebrews again, chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 6. It says in chapter 8, verse 6, But now as he obtained... Think about that. As he obtained anything he obtained, he didn't obtain it for himself. He didn't need forgiveness. It was sinless. Forgiveness, he obtained that for you. Freedom, he obtained that for you. He didn't need that freedom. He had been free from all eternity. Healing, he obtained that for you. He wasn't sick. And so he's not obtaining healing for himself. Power. It's always been powerful. He didn't need to obtain that for himself. Everything he obtained at Calvary, he obtained for you. I said he obtained for you. And all those things he obtained, they've been waiting there for years. And the owner has not come to claim them. You come this morning, you will claim everything you obtained for you. But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. In the old covenant, the laws were put on the stone. And the stone of containing the Decalogue, the laws, all those stones were not in the house of everybody. It was in the Holy of Holies kept there, preserved there. And so people could not go there every day and read those laws. And many of the laws that came of the civil law, ceremonial law, and in the Mosaic law, they didn't know that by heart. And so they made mistakes and they fell and they sinned a lot of times and then God said a new covenant is coming a new dispensation is coming I will put my laws in their mind and write them I myself will write them the laws of God in their hearts no more on the stone that the difference you know when you come to the lord and you know your privilege in christ and you know that what he does now he writes his word is right it's law in your mind in your heart and i will be to them a god and anytime they call upon me i'll show up i'll say i'm still here by your side behind you in front of you, in your heart, and above you, and beneath you are the everlasting arms. You know, as we come in the new covenant, in the better covenant, underneath us 
He will not allow your foot to go astray. Around you, he will not allow the enemy to do any evil and take you by surprise. And then above you, in fact, it says, it will be a wall of fire around you. Privilege, privilege. The privilege he gives us in the better covenant. He said, I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. People of God. Are they here today, people of God? Or are they people of God? We are not people of Satan. We are not people of the world. We are the people of God. And anywhere we go, he goes with us. Anywhere we go, he's present with us. Anywhere we go, his power is with us. With me. With me. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. You know, when you have that, the God of heaven, the ancient of days, the most powerful, when you have him, in you, around you, beneath you, above you, before you, behind you. You'll not be going about moody, sorrowful, always crying. It's like the whole world is on him. It's like all the problems of the world. They rigged everything together and they put it at her doorstep. And I say, sister, are you born again? Yes, pastor, I'm born again. Born again, very sure I'm born again. But you're always sad. Yes, pastor, because you know it's not an easy road. Sometimes on the mountain, sometimes in the valley. Sometimes the thorn and sometimes the rose and sometimes the evil and sometimes the good I said which dispensation do you belong to he said the dispensation of Christ he said now if that is so everything will change in your life our privilege our privilege in the better covenant and the Lord will lift you up and raise you up today in Jesus name I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people look at number two there number two there is the purging of the believers conscience the purging of the believers conscience look at Hebrews chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 12 it says neither by the blood of goats and cows bought by his own blood by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained eternal redemption for us what kind of redemption you see uh, people who go about redemption temporary redemption redemption weak redemption redemption a, a shaky redemption but christ the kind of redemption he has for us is the eternal redemption i have eternal redemption i said i have eternal redemption eternal redemption does not expire on sunday night after we've come back from church and we had such a great message on that Sunday and the preacher gave everything to us and we became elated and lifted up and then Sunday night, can you guess I'm going back to work on Monday? I'm going back to that same place on Monday. I'm going back to that place. There are lions there. There are tigers there. There, there are difficult people there. Can, you know what is happening? Uh, the redemption uh, expired Sunday night. But the redemption that Jesus gives does not ever expire. I have it today. I have it today. I feel it in my soul. I sense it in my mind. And I have it in my spirit. It keeps you strong. It keeps you powerful. Because it is an eternal redemption. God perform it in every life. That anywhere you go, you'll say, my redemption has not expired. My redemption has not expired. My redemption has not come to an end. Your redemption is not like a candle. 
that were that were light and then it's going down going down going down and then after some time of quenched that's not redemption the redemption is an ongoing thing and the power of the lord will keep that eternal redemption in your life in jesus name look at verse 14 in verse 14 it tells us it says how much more how much more how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god that's what purge it means to wash it means to cleanse there are times you have a particular uh, material you want to watch and you take a particular detergent and you wash it and the stains are still there the spots are still there and you scrub and you spot scrub and you put that detergent over and over and you spot and you wash and the stains are still there you see i want this stain off and so you take it to the dry cleaner and it has the super detergent and uh, he doesn't reveal the secret to you because if he does, you'll not be bringing those materials to him. And then he uses that super detergent and he washes everything, irons everything, and he presents it to you. You look at it from every side and from every way, all the spots are gone. I said all the spots are gone. You see, when you try to wash, when you start to purge by yourself, your conscience, your heart, your spirit, your soul will be earthly detergent. You wash and wash, you pray, you fast, you cry, you shed tears, and you look at it. The earthly detergent is not able to remove every spot. And you try again and try again. You quote the promises, you lie down, you roll on the ground, you say this thing must not continue. You get up again and then as you are praying, the old liar is still reminding you of the past life. You, he will never answer your prayer. You Don't you know who you are? If God is answering other people, look at this, look at the spots are still there. You say, what do I do now? I'll tell you what to do bring uh, that material to Jesus I said bring that material to Jesus and then he will purge he will wash and by the time you come out the remembrance of all sports everything is gone the remembrance of all deficiency incompetence in your life all that is gone and now you come to God and the righteousness of Christ has been given to you no guilt no condemnation and now you can come in the presence of God without any sense of sin give me a good amen it will do it in every life it says how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God we're coming to number three here number three is our preparation for the best commendation our preparation for the best commendation you know in our lives if we're not assured that we have done something good our lives will not be happy you know you do your best and you give your best and you do everything and somebody will still find fault and say but how about this and then you try again and try again and you are waiting that commendation will come and once in a while they will give us commendation that's good that's all right i appreciate that i love that but then five minutes after they call us again they said uh, i told you that that was all right how about this wait when we get over there and we are completely victorious and we go through the veil on the final day and we pass through the eternal everlasting judge he will give you commendation that angels will look at you and say what is that the man is that the woman over there we're going to have the best commendation 
and you will have the best commendation. There will be no condemnation for you. And there will be no judgment for you because Christ has taken all your judgment and as you rely on him, as you depend upon him, heavenly commendation eternal commendation and you'll have your reward in jesus name we're coming to hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 it says and as it is appointed unto men wants to die appointed unto men wants to die now please understand when it says appointed unto men wants to die we don't all die in the same way Moses died, and then Korah, Dathan, and Abiram died. They didn't die the same way. Joshua died, Achan died. They didn't die in the same way. David died, Absalom died. They didn't die in the same way. Stephen died, Ananas and Sapphira died. They didn't die the same way. And so don't, don't, don't compare yourself with, you know, the Achan and the Absalom and the Ananas and Sapphira and say they died, they died, and we're going to die. Our own dying is royal death. Yeah. Royal that the angels of God are waiting in heaven for us. And they say, he is coming, Stephen. Stephen looked up to heaven, and then he saw Jesus Christ standing on the right hand of majesty on high. And he said, I see the heavens open, and I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the Almighty God. And then he said, Lord Jesus, Jesus, receive my spirit. That's royal death. That's the kind of death you are going to die. You'll not die the death of a sinner. The death of a compromiser. The death of a, a sinful person. But you'll die. If Jesus does not come before you die, you'll die like a saint. I said you'll die like a saint. It's appointed unto men who wants to die. But after this, the judgment. Now, that word judgment is, again, you have to understand. He doesn't judge the believer as he judges the unbeliever. He doesn't judge the saint as he judges the sinner. Paul the apostle said, I have kept the faith. I have finished my work because and now a crown of righteousness is is waiting for me and not for me only but for all them that love is appearing and your love is appearing so the judgment will be the evaluation of your good work the evaluation of your righteous life the evaluation of your righteous influence upon people if you're a saint of god a child of god but the other people who die the other side and they fall to the other side it will be the judgment of a sinful life and then what awaits sinners at the end of a sinful life they will get but for you believer in christ minister in christ child of god and you have christ in you christ in your heart and christ in your life and christ in your steps and you're walking the way of the lord by the grace of god when that kind of time comes you'll have the best commendation in jesus name i can just imagine as you come you have left the world here and the people in the world they're crying and then you march into the gate of heaven and the angels of God are standing up because you my sister you are coming home you my brother you are coming home and they all stand in attention and Jesus Christ who was sitting at the right hand of majesty when he went to heaven as Stephen was coming he stood up he will stand up for you and then you'll come in and he says welcome enter into the kingdom of god you are faithful in a few things you'll be ruler you'll be master you'll be king over many things in jesus name i'll see you there i'll meet you there 
by the grace of God I'll be there by the grace of God you'll be there the only thing that makes me to be there grace not because of you know what I've done but because of what he has done and the same grace is available for you grace in me and grace in you grace for you and grace for me and his grace is sufficient for you and the best commendation is waiting for you on the final day don't allow the devil he's lost everything to come to you he's a loser and he wants to make you a loser that will not happen to you look at verse 28 in verse 28 it says so christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin without the sin offering he's done it already without the sin offering unto salvation we're coming to point number three point number three here the incontestable confidence in his shortage we're coming to chapter 10 look at verse 6 roman um, hebrews chapter 10 verse 6 in bond offerings and sacrifices for sin thou art had no pleasure and then in verse 7 then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is reaching of me to do thy will O god christ said i come to do thy will O god now the incontestable confidence we have in the surety ship of christ three things here number one his true commitment and righteousness and sacrificial resolve number two truthful consecration and renewal under his supreme reign number three trustful confidence and readiness for his sudden return look at number one number one is true commitment righteousness and sacrificial result look at hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 7 then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me i to do thy will O god christ said when he came all that he did was the will of god the messages he preached the will of god the life he lived, the will of God. The sicknesses he healed, the will of God. The demons he cast out, the will of God. His prayer at Gethsemane, the will of God. is going to the cross to die for you, for me, for the rest of the world. The will of God, lo, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. Look at Psalm 40. I'm reading from verse 6. It's Psalm 40. We're looking at verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire my ears as thou opened bunch offering and sin offering as thou not required look at verse 7 then said i it, it will appear is david talking but really it was christ talking through him it was prophecy for the lord jesus christ you will think you will say look at what david has said that's the mistake we make sometimes when we're hearing uh, the preaching uh, of the word we don't understand it's not the word of the preacher they will say did you hear what he said did you hear what he declared did you hear what he expounded it's not he it's him and here david appeared to be talking but it was christ then said i lo i come in the volume of the book it is reaching of me look at verse 8 it says in verse 8 i delight to do thy will oh my god yea thy law is within my heart christ was committed and christ was righteous and christ came to offer 
acceptable perfect sacrifice unto the heavenly father on your behalf on my behalf everything christ did on my behalf everything christ spoke on my behalf and as he went to the father in the presence of the father and he said i've completed the sacrifice for him for you for her for you everything he did he did for you and so you cannot live from hand to mouth a poor believer you know somebody says oh poor me Oh, wretched me, oh, unfortunate me that I was born in a place like this. Change your language. Not too wretched do you. How can you be wretched? How can you be, you know, kind of sorrowful, unfortunate? When Christ, everything Christ did on the cross of Calvary, he did for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let's look at number two here. Number two here is true commitment, full, truthful consecration and renewal under his supreme reign. Welcome to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Having therefore boldness, we have it already. Having therefore boldness, it's like saying, having therefore salvation have been there for a substitutionary sacrifice have been there for its provision and there are people who are praying for their lifetime lord boldness lord boldness and sometimes you are traveling on the way and then you see a lorry before you and as you look at what is written at the back of that lorry it takes take courage have you ever thought about that take courage it's saying it's right there by your side it's right there and you can touch you can reach it says take courage and then you close your eyes you're praying you're praying give me courage take courage and you're saying oh lord if i need to fast to have courage take courage thank god i have courage thank god i have boldness having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of jesus into the holiest the tabernacle of the children of israel at an outer court one and the holy place to then at the inner sanctuary the holiest of all and it says don't stay at the outer court that's where we arch the conviction of our sin and then the liver of water washes us from all unrighteousness and then we come to the holy place and there we have uh, the show bread and then we have the manner of life and we have the labor we have everything uh, and then it says don't stop there that's why the average Israelites taught in the old covenant and only the high priest could enter into the holy earth once a year but now he says brethren everyone we have the boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of jesus you will enter to the highest you will enter to the holiest you will enter and to the best provision of calvary you will enter in jesus name if you find anyone complaining anyone saying anyone bemoaning himself i am still like this and this is the way i've been for the past 10 years my situation has not changed it's in the outer court now pick up courage take courage and take boldness and come and enter and this morning you enter i see you coming you enter i said i see you coming you enter in jesus name and as you enter you enter by faith look at verse 23 there in verse 23 it tells us let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering as we are come don't wobble 
don't waver come confidently because now you are coming into the holiest of all you of all people you are entering into the holiest of all amen and anywhere you go you carry that with you you become special in the sight of god in the sight of christ in the sight of angels in the sight of your neighbors you're no more like you used to be because now you enter faithfully let us hold fast the profession confession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised he is faithful that promised I will enter in. I will enter in. A new experience. Renewal in your life. Righteousness in your life. Power in your life. In Jesus name. Number three here. We're looking at number three. Trustful confidence and readiness for a sudden return. And we're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. We're reading from verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Cast not away your confidence. That means to start with, you have the confidence. And it says, you have that confidence in Christ. You have the confidence in Calvary. You have the confidence in everything he has provided. It says, you have it, don't cast it away. You cannot cast it away if you don't have it. You have confidence in Christ. You have confidence in God. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Great recompense of reward. You will have reward. Your life will be profitable. Your life will be rewardable. Look at verse 36. It says in verse 36, For ye have need of patience, or perseverance that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise I will receive the promise I will receive the promise you find somebody has prayed after praying it comes out of the place of prayer and then you find him still as such as he ever was as sorrowful as he ever was to say my brother or my sister what's the matter it's because i prayed and i've been praying don't you have the confidence that he has answered yes i do if you have the confidence and you have and you are holding fast to the profession of your faith because he is faithful who had promised why are you so sad I don't know. I'm just sad. No, you're not very sad. If you have confidence, Anna was praying. And Anna was crying and praying quite, but quietly, but her mouth was moving. And Eli said, take away your drunkenness, your wine. And the woman said, I'm not drunk because out of the body and the sorrow of my heart have I spoken. And then Eli said, Be it unto you as you have requested. The Lord has granted you. And then we are told, Anna's face changed. She became bright because she knew confidence in the Lord. What I have asked, He has given. What you have asked, He has given. That your concern over your wife, God has answered. Your concern over your husband, God has answered. Your concern over your children, God has answered. Your concern over your future. Will I continue like this? I want a higher future, stronger, greater future. The Lord has answered. Then you can cheer up because you know it is done. For you. For you. For we have need of patience that after we have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Verse 37. Verse 37 says, For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. He will come. To bless you, he will come. To take you out of this dusty world, he will come. To take you to the place he has prepared for you, he will come. He that shall come, will come. 
I will not tarry. The Lord is coming for me. The Lord is coming for me. The Lord is coming for me. That place is going to prepare. I will be there. I will be there. When the saints go marching in, there is no iota of doubt in your heart. You will march in with them in Jesus' name. Yet, a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Verse 38, in verse 38 now, the just shall live by faith. Every day of your life, the just shall live by faith. Any challenge you face, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Now, it's not saying you'll draw back. I will not draw back. I will not draw back. It's just telling you that, remember, there was a Judas Iscariot among the twelve. But thank God, what happened to Judas Iscariot did not happen to every disciple. And what happened to him will not happen to me. Say it for yourself. There was a Demas among the fellow workers, fellow laborers of Paul the Apostle. Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. But Timothy was still there. Titus was still there. Tychicus was still there. And, uh, you know, all those uh, people, they were still there. They were just one, just one, Demas. And thank God, my name is not Demas. Thank God, my name is not Judas. They went back, I will not go back. You will not go back. Because if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Look at verse 39. It says in verse 39, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. I am not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe and believe and believe to the saving of the soul. I believe. I keep on believing. I will always believe. The faith I have in Christ, say the faith I have in Christ, I will not let it go. It will hold your hand. It will keep you steady. And when that final day will come, I see you. Victorious, conquering, going on, he will receive you to glory. Where are you? Stand up on your feet and tell the Lord, Lord, I know you are going to hold me to the very end. It will hold you. It will hold you. It's Jesus and we have the more excellent ministry. Think about your privilege. Hold on to that privilege. It will never forsake you.